we've seen McIntyre, uh, he's gone through the notion uh, of, of practices. We looked at the chess example, and the whole thing is to get a core idea, a core concept of a virtue. And so previously, that analysis was to lead up to something like this. Uh, so now I'm still in, in chapter 14, the nature of the virtues in after virtue, the book. Uh, a virtue is an acquired, so this is sort of loosely paraphrasing what's going on. A virtue for McIntyre is an acquired human quality, let's call it X, uh, that enables one to achieve those goods internal to the embedding practice of X. So, you know, whatever virtue you have, uh, uh, you're going to have a, a, a kind of practice in which that virtue is embedded. Remember, you know, tossing a spiral uh, pass is not the same thing as actually playing football. Um, so if you, uh, and so if you lack X, you don't really get those in, in internal goods. Now, um, now, but, but practices, you know, so there's another level to this hierarchy, right? That, that the virtues are kind of embedded in, in, in practices and practices are embedded in institutions. So that's another, shall we say, a le a, another level up. So a practice involves goods, uh, again, achieved only by subordinating, uh, subordinating ourselves, uh, to other uh, superior, like better practitioners or more experienced ones. You know, you get in the chess game and there's gonna be better players than you and you learn from them. Um, so you take lessons, there's a social structure to the practice. Um, and so different societies now, if we pull back, you know, according to McIntyre, different societies may have different codes of truthfulness, justice and so on, but in all cases, uh, people learn and develop their virtues and exercise their virtues in this context of a social structure. Uh, and all of these uh, code systems acknowledge uh, the virtue of, of truthfulness. Vices can flourish in these systems as well. Um, the, the vice practitioner uh, relies on the virtuous ones around him or her. And, uh, and but uh, ultimately the vice practitioner will, according to McIntyre, deny him or herself of the internal goods. So they may get external goods. So yeah, if someone goes in and cheats, uh, they might get the uh, uh, the external goods. You know, someone goes into a practice and, and cheats their way. They might win a trophy or something, but they won't, you know, some, let's say someone cheated their way in a, a chess tournament. Maybe they win, um, but they don't become a good chess player. Because why? Because they cheated, right? By definition, you, you're you not being a good chess player if you win by cheating. Um, so you won't access the internal good of chess by cheating. So even if you do get an external good, like best chess player award of the year or something like that, you don't get the internal good. Um, uh, practices, of course, require the technical skills. But again, with the, the, the throwing the football accurately versus being a quarterback, uh, you know, clearly uh, the uh, uh, practices require more than just a, a, a technical skill. Um, they don't just have fixed goals. That is, practices are dynamic entity. They play the value placed on 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 the internal uh, goods with uh, the whole exercise of technical skills. So technical skills are a necessary part of a practice, but they're not a sufficient condition of the practice. There's more to it. <clears throat> The uh, um, the yeah so the technical goals and 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 the the, the or sorry the, the the internal goods and goals and the technical exercises actually develop the practice so that uh, uh, practices have histories and they they transcend just a mere improvement or exercise of skills they are dynamic objects and uh, as people get in they enrich the tradition so the tradition. Uh, grow. So as you get into the chess playing tradition, you become a good player, you help develop the practice of, of playing chess. And anyone who studies the tradition of practices in, uh, can see that they're, they are dynamic uh, objects. Um, so and, and of course, when you enter a practice, you enter a community. So that is to enter something with a history. Uh, and of course, you have relationships with current practitioners. And indirectly, you have a relationship with the past ones. You know, when they say you must, you know, you're learning to play chess, so you're going to have to study the greats of the past. So you would study the history of it and learn from uh, from the previous uh, uh, chess masters. And so the the virtues that you develop will help you learn and and become a, a deeper and more contributing member of that practice. 
Um, and, and now practices, it, this introduces another distinction is that practices are not institutions, but they do depend on institutions. And institutions are kind of places for practices to rest. And ex but the difference is that institutions often deal with external goods. And so, uh, so for instance, um, institutions are structured because they deal with external goods. They're structured in terms of money and power. So, for instance, uh, uh, chess and physics and philosophy, you, you might, and medicine and something like that, you could think of being uh, practices. So I practice philosophy. I'm in a community of philosophers and we engage in the practice of philosophy. And, and, you know, the better I get, the better I can contribute. My colleagues get better, they contribute, and we get better as a community. Sounds good. Um, but we work at an institution, right? Namely, a university. And what does that do? Well, um, so the, the, there's the practice of philosophy, of philosophy. The participants are philosophers, and they work at the institution. And the institution, though, is we're dependent. The practice is dependent because you got rid of the institutions. It'd be pretty hard to be a practicing philosopher without the institution of the university. But the institution of the university deals with external goods like pay, promotion, rewards, those kinds of things. Um, and, and of course, as we often say, uh, people can be misled out of their practice and become too fixated on external goods. So instead of worrying about practicing philosophy, you might, you know, become a little too career minded or, you know, you're worried too much about prestige and getting honors and praise from uh, from a university that you happen to work at. Um, or you're just all consumed with everything is to do with your salary, something like that. So as McIntyre says, you got to be careful that 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 the embedding institution of the practice, right? So the virtues are embedded in the practice and the practices are embedded in the, uh, but not identical to the institution um, because the, the trade on external goods is done by the embedding institution. They can tend to corrupt the individuals and the practice itself so that it, it becomes less of a practice of philosophy and just a gang of people trying to make a lot of money or something like that. So, um, and, and of course, this is uh, uh, McIntyre's point is that uh, uh, there is an there is an intimate r relationship between practices and institutions. There's intimate relationships often between ex internal and external goods. And it's so it's precisely these virtues of, uh, of, of justice and courage that help the practice resist the corrupting influence and power of, uh, of institutions. Um, okay, so people, uh, you know, learn and, and they gain and learn and fail uh, uh, in particular communities with their own particular institutional forms. So you have to have uh, healthy institutions as well for your practices because institutions can corrupt practices. Um, now, uh, uh, McIntyre then, you know, asks us to consider, uh, you know, other, other views that that, that have sort of a more disengaged one where the, where the sort of embedding structure is much more distant, like in like, uh, uh, liberal individualism. Um, and here, the political institutions are completely just a background structure, just an ordering structure. And so individuals can go off and, you know, enjoy life, liberty, and, and whatever what they in pursuit of happiness, right? So that that in that sense, the, the embedding structure is totally removed from all aspects. It doesn't impose any good. There's nothing uh, uh, like that. And so governments in this view only provide the structure and there is, uh, it's not there. Government's not there to go any further or to encourage a particular moral outlook. And McIntyre uh, thinks that the, the modern state is kind of like this and it can't really offer anything uh, for individuals. There is if and in this sense, if uh, if if you live in a state that's like this, it's got a sort of a deficit, a virtue deficit. One could say McIntyre didn't quite use that term, but um, in that sense, it, it only it, it encourages the the concern for external goods and not internal ones. So people become in these kinds of liberal societies, you know, very concerned with power and prestige. They become concerned with external goods. That's what it's all about. There's no sort of internal good 
that's uh, uh, held as, as valuable. Um, and in that sense, uh, you get a, a more corrosive kind of, uh, in the end, you don't have the internal values and the virtues to protect against this corrosive influence. So it's not that, 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 that there's a deliberate attempt, but it's this lack of uh, providing, you know, a, 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 a proper background for a practice to thrive that can actually cause an erosion of the virtues, according to McIntyre. So this is a, a preliminary account. It, you, you know, you have to go and there's richer stuff going on in the text than this. I, is it Aristotle's view though? Like remember, McIntyre was trying to push an Aristotelian kind of view, but remember, it wasn't a, a kind of view like Aristotle's, not Aristotle per se. And, and to be fair, probably if Aristotle came back and looked at the modern world, he would reevaluate many of his propositions, like everything he said that was connected with science. He would probably abandon quite quickly. Um, and of course, since his science was connected to much, uh, his view of science, what he thought it was, is connected to his philosophy. It's not surprising his philosophy would change as well. So certainly McIntyre has abandoned you know a lot of Aristotle's metaphysics and uh, his certainly his metaphysical biology uh, you don't really see that in uh, McIntyre um, there is a teleological aspect to McIntyre he thinks you know that practices and uh, that we live in that develop our virtues they do have standards and what you ought to be to be a good chess player um, it's different uh, from Aristotle in a variety of other ways. Um, and also even with the notion of conflict, uh, Aristotle tends to see it as more of a, of a, a kind of a failure in the individual character and McIntyre is, you know, sees it more as the, 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 the claims of competing practices that we have on them, on, on that, have on us, that is. Um, but it is Aristotelian in a few ways. Uh, as well, it, it, McIntyre makes a big distinction between uh, intellectual and character virtues, as Aristotle, and uh, McIntyre, as he reads Aristotle, is against utilitarianism as well, and has a similar view of, of, of pleasure. Now, of course, there's lots of criticisms you can throw at, at you know, like, for instance, earlier on, we talked about uh, practices and virtues being embedded in them, and so you know, this kind of relativism, right? You know, it, it certainly could be made out to be one that, that, you know, there's just nothing outside of practices. There are just practices and, and traditions and you can't step outside them. There's no neutral ground. So you can't really criticize. You just look at things from inside of a tradition against the other. Um, what about practices that, uh, uh, you know, support, uh, you know, horrible things like the practice of torture and that kind of stuff? Um, does this mean that we have to be, you know, happy about that or whatever? This is a terrible thing, but it, it could fit the, uh, the notion of a practice standards and, you know, it comes out very ghastly when you think about it. Um, but it still would fit the idea of, a, of, a, of a McIntyre, of McIntyre's idea of a practice. Um, and, and McIntyre admits that, sure, there's lots of practices that are just fundamentally evil. Um, it's not clear how we can how that would work because that seems to be outside an outside notion of evil of all practice but he just thinks that you know you know it doesn't mean you have to tolerate uh every kind of practice and say they're all uh equally good um so in in, in the end that that sort of gives you an overall view of what mcintyre thinks the practice is and um remember that they are you know a, a, the notion of a collectivity of a social kind of collectivity uh, that's usually cooperative, uh, competitive to a certain degree, and has standards uh, of excellence.